I've always been a unique person, you know what I mean? Uh, Sort of laid back in a way, but very adamant and very passionate about what I believe. I think a lot of times that sort of throws people off because they don't expect me to have the mindset or the process of thought that I do. And so when you come in to watch my channel, you may hear a myriad of thoughts and ideas that could be different from others. What I want you to do is just sit back, like, share, and subscribe. Well, hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? I'm so glad to see each and every one of you here this evening. We have an awesome guest this evening. Derek Rose is here with me. Derek Rose, he's my bro. I like it. It was a joke. It was like a little, okay, anyway. Anyway, you guys, I'm really glad that you all are here. I'm glad you guys that know me know that I have a very quirky sense of humor and I'm really not as funny as I think I am. But what I want to tell you guys tonight is I have an unbelievable guest. Derek Rose is a wealth of information. He's a very genuine man. Um, I've actually followed him for several years since he's uh, come to YouTube. I found him to be very refreshing a few years ago. Um, and I, I just want to say, we're just going to slide him on up here. It's, it's not going to be a whole lot of fanfare because we're here to glorify only one this evening. And that is the creator of all. And what I want to say is it is an outstanding thing that you can actually find people who have like mind, who are of like mind. And tonight we're going to have some conversations. We're going to take some, uh, take, take the roof off of it. We're going to take the whole roof off of it. Y'all know what I mean when I say take the roof off of it. Well, we're going to take it off and we're going to talk and we're going to, um, we're going to get some, uh, some answers to some questions. The first thing is congratulations to him for the hundred thousand. He hit a hundred thousand today. And that's because of you. For those of you who follow him, that's because of you. So thank you for that. And then I also want to talk about with him, and I'm sure you guys want to know as well, what does it mean to be a willing witness? What does that mean? A willing witness. Hello. Hey there. Hey there. It's so good to see your sweet face and hear your <laughs> <wonderful> voice. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny when when we first talk, Felicia. I I um, you know, just talking to you on the phone, hearing your voice, and the very first thing is we were trying to set up a conversation, and you said, mm -hmm. "No, I'm with my husband," and um, we're we're at the 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 game with our yes. grandson, and I was like, "Oh yeah, no priorities, prior," and it immediately just struck me, you know, that you your priorities were in line with what they should be, and I was like, this. This lady is uh, is a very solid person. She's she put things in perspective and and put uh, the priorities, the proper priorities in place. I appreciated that. I just wanted to let you know that. Well, I'm so glad that you do appreciate that because, you know, I really want to see a lot more people, especially women. All right. Put that as a priority, the family, the husband, the, the household. And sometimes we don't know exactly um, because we're listening to outside sources. Sometimes we don't know exactly what we should do. Some people will say, well, don't do that now. This is important because it's about business or this is important because it's about money. No, the only thing that you're going to look back in 10 years and remember is what you did or didn't do for your family. Yeah. Self-reflection is what we did and did not do. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy part. That's the crazy and that, part. And that's what, and that's where I've been. And that's what a willing witness is. Okay. What, did I, what did I do and what did I not do? Mm. And why didn't I do it if I was supposed to do it? And if it's my calling to do it, why didn't I live in it? Why didn't I walk in it? So I can only address me and to do it transparently means I'm a willing witness. I'm willing to witness not just everybody else around me so I can put my finger at them because I'm not going to do that. The only person I can point a finger at is at me and what I've got to do to fix me because only then can I make a suggestion to them. That's the, you know, the why talk about the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own. That's because the log starts from your eye. And by the time it reaches their eye, it looks like a speck. Mm -hmm. But it's your log. So a willing witness is somebody that's willing to dig inside themselves, do the deep, deep, dark shadow work, handle yourself, uh, recognize that it's only you that saves you. Hmm. Save yourself physician heal thyself hmm. and once you can do that then you can smile at others when they have the same issues that you have and you cannot be triggered by them hmm. you cannot be hurt by them you cannot be agitated by them because they themselves they they are your issues hmm. that you've handled and so that's where you get to witness to them 
And only then is it true because it's true because I did it. <laughs> I did it and I'll confess it and I'll testify to it. And it becomes my testimony, my testimony of forgiveness, my testimony of being forgiven, my testimony of walking out the path of Christ, talking, doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, what the father asks me to do, not what he doesn't ask me to do, not what I ask myself to do, not what I think other people want me to do, but what the father asks me to do. What does my creator and the creator of all things want me to do? Why did he equip me with what I have? Why did he give me my thought? Why did he give these things to me? He gave the good things to me. The enemy gave me the bad things. So it's my job and to be willing to go and find what the enemy created in me and destroy that. Hmm. You know, um, a couple of weeks back, actually almost a month, uh, I'm going to pull up this tweet. And I want you to talk about this tweet for me because I commented on, I was like, wow, that was a pro that was profound. And uh, I want you to, I want you to talk to me about this. Can you see it? I'm going to yeah. make it a little bigger. And no, I'm I gonna, can, you I can, it? Yeah. I think I now understand the meaning behind why those that loved Jesus later screamed, crucify him with such hatred by wanting death upon him. They finally seen, they finally saw that they were not capable of actually following him. And what that meant. Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> That's heavy. It was profound. Well, well, to me, it was the it was the parable that he spoke of the seeds falling on the rocks mm -hmm. where the soil wasn't that wasn't prepared for the seeds, and it sprouted up very quickly because of its joy. They were joyful mm -hmm. because they received this truth, but they had no root in them. And so when the heat came, the heat came, and they withered and died. Mm -hmm. Because, and then he also promised, you will be persecuted. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. At least know that I've died to this world and I've died to that persecution. I've endured it already. And so you can too. So let me be evidence. Let me be a witness to you and for you. But I can't do it for you. You've got to do it. And the thing is, is that they were so angry that they loved hearing it because it's truth. It's the scroll. That, you know, hey, eat of this little scroll and on your mouth and your tongue, it's going to be like honey. It'll be so sweet. But when it hits your stomach, it will turn bitter and bitter means poison. Mm. It will be poisonous to you. However, you must continue to prophesy. So those that can't continue to prophesy after enduring the bitterness, because what happens is he gave them the truth and then they have to live in it. And then the heat comes from their friends, their family, the world, their job, everything comes down upon them. Their pastors, their friends in their church, they, they're pariahs overnight and they cannot handle that heat and that seed where there's a way. And now they cannot take the glasses off. They cannot unsee what they've seen. They cannot unhear what they've heard and they hate him for it. <laughs> and they say, crucify him. So accountability in their face, basically. That's uh, what they could not handle. Could not handle. They can't handle it. And, you know, and this is where we have to be really sympathetic and empathetic. We've got to realize that, you know, as I've realized so much of myself um, in my recent Dark Night of the Soul, is that we must be willing to dig and to find in ourselves the things that we have hidden so deeply and we, we we need it right now. Everybody is going to need to be a strength as but as from from a from a visual standpoint, from an actual standpoint, watching people endure, watching them endure and watching them maintain their crown, watching them maintain their love, being empathetic and sympathetic to everybody else because they went through things. Everybody has something. Everybody has something that makes them a certain way. And because we don't understand their life or we don't understand what they've done, we point our finger and persecute them and say, well, you shouldn't be like that. Well, that's impossible for us to be able to say and recognize about somebody else unless we really, really do spend time finding who they are, finding out where their issues came from, just like we had to find out where ours came from. Where were we indoctrinated? How did my parents unknowingly, we're not going to blame them unknowingly everybody's been duped the whole planet the great deception that christ spoke about happened long ago and everybody's living what they believe to be the right thing to do 
even though many times people know that it's not the right thing to do, but they still do it. Um, even Paul, who we both agree on, we don't necessarily like Paul a whole lot. <laughs> um, Paul has some beautiful spiritual truths, but the reality is Paul took those spiritual truths from the people that he killed that were actual followers of Christ. Yeah, and you know, but but here's the thing that 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 gets me, because I mean, I get, you know, a, a lot of people will call you a heretic or they'll call you this or they'll call you that because you have, you know, the audacity. And I mean, you, you in general, who may be in the chat, myself, all of us, you. Whoever yeah. you is. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the deal is, is that once you do your own study and once you start to really, really dig in, I remember I always tell the story about how in 2015, after many years in ministry, you know, many years of traveling with like big, big people singing on large platforms that mean absolutely zilch now, meant zilch then. But after all of that, I actually found myself at a place of having to ask the creator to show me who he really was. Yeah. And, 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 you know, a lot of people were looking at me like I was tripping, but I was like, no, there has to be so much deeper to him than what I'm being shown. Everybody sort of parrots the same thing. And for me, that made me sort of uncomfortable. So in 2015, when I began to ask, I had no idea how much was going to be peeled away from what I thought I knew. I had no clue. And now that I look back, I remember thinking that I used to just, I was enamored of Paul. I really was. I just thought yeah. Paul was awesome until, you know, I started really studying. And then once I started studying about four years ago, when I came into the understanding of rightly dividing the word of truth, it mm. blew my mind. Oh yeah. It blew my mind. So it's like, you got this thing that you think is truth. Take that and then exegy out of it and then keep doing it until you have nothing, until yeah. it's nothing but that truth, that nugget that is real. And that is what it means when you got when you start studying and you start digging and you start asking him to show you truth. He will show it to you, but you're going to unravel a whole oh, yeah. lot of people's hats and you're going to tear up a whole lot of apple carts and people are really going to come out after you. But here's what I, I think. It's all good. I'm going to plant the seeds that I'm responsible to plant. and. Whoever grabs it, I'm going to still treat you with love. I'm not going to talk bad about you if you don't. But if you grab it, you grab it. If you don't, I'm still here. You can always come back later and say, hey, you were right. We can go on ahead and we can agree to disagree for now. But I want you to know the door is always open. To, I can help you make it along the way. Does that make sense? Of course. Of I can course. help you make it along the way. Absolutely. Look, I, I can help you. I can help you guide your eyes in a certain direction. I'm not going to give you the answer because the answer has to be yours. You've got to find it. You have to see it. Bingo. Yeah. And the thing with, with Paul is that it's been, you know, you know, people should understand that I don't hate Paul. I don't hate I him. Understand, I understand Paul was just used like many of us have been used. Oh, yeah. Right. I don't think that he consciously knew that he was going to be used in a massive religion that was orchestrated by Rome and the Hebrews at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, but, but at the same time, it's spoken of in the scriptures when, when Caiaphas, the high priest, prophesied when they were saying, we can't let Jesus go on talking like this or Rome will come and take away our place and our nation. And the high priest said, don't you know nothing at all? And he prophesied because he was the high priest. Now, prophecy just simply means that you're saying that something that will happen in the future. He was in a position to prophesy it because he was in a position to manipulate it and make it happen. So that's prophecy for a high priest in a powerful position amongst the Hebrews in a Roman Roman controlled world where they were worried about Rome coming to take away their place in their nation. So what he did, he said, don't you know, it's better for us to have one man die and bring all the children of God back under one umbrella, his, theirs, Rome's, the Hebrews, so they wouldn't lose their place in their nation. So all of the children of God. So I have to ask what God what God were you doing that for? What God, when Christ said specifically uh, about the Father, go and learn what this means. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, but yet they're going to sacrifice me. It's going to be a blood sacrifice for them. They're going to have a burnt offering, a holocaust of me and of other people and of other Christians so they can accomplish what they need to accomplish. They sacrifice these things. This is this is Baal worship. This has always been, it's been paganized since the Hebrews were involved and it was Babylonian Talmud that they were all following. So this is not, 
if anybody's done any real research about this, this is quite obvious. And the new indoctrination from religions and Christianity and even Islam, um, and I've studied them all. You know, people go, well, you, you've clearly never read the Quran. It's like, man, I've read the Quran probably, uh, you know, 15 or 20 times and studied it quite deeply. And I'm sure you've never even read a Sarah. So why would you say that? Um, it's really remarkable what we have to encounter in this world. But this is why it requires, Felicia, it requires people like you. It requires people like me that... You know, not only are we going to be attacked for the things that we're, we're that we're saying, but the enemy, the God of this world, doesn't like that we're saying it. And so he's going to come at us from every angle he can. He's going to weaken us. He's going to try to dampen us. He's going to try to shut us up. He's going to try to hurt you. He's going to demonetize you. He's going to make sure that it's challenging, that you're, you know. Wondering, it has been. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, right now in my daughter's apartment, which, you know, they're about to lose. And begin, but I'm living in an RV and I'm like, hey, you know what? If this is what the father needs me to go through, I've done this before. I've been homeless before. Mm -hmm. I, I'll do it again. I'm freezing my ever-loving butt off out here. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm not in Montana and 30 below zero, but, you know, it's still snowy and still cold. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning again to love what he brings us through in order for us to reignite. It, it, it's only through trauma and things like this that he brings us closer to him because we can't see him and hear him. We get distracted. And I, I appreciate it. But. Um, and I appreciate talking with people like you that see this even before me. It's like you, you found these things organically on your own. Mm -hmm. I had some help later, but oh boy. Oh yeah. But you, it's like, you're slammed. You're mm -hmm. just overwhelmed by it. And you know, that's where everybody that's watching this, I'm sure right now has experienced that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I want to say this, I know that, um, it keeps you very humble. It does. It keeps and you very humble because you don't, you know, you can't share everything all the time. So you end up refraining and then you end up seeing people with a different lens. It's like, I was there once. I'm not going to, you know, I see this person as a zealot. I get it. I'm going to love them and I'm going to just let them be because they don't, they don't know any better yet. And so it, it makes you, once you, once you start going through and learning a little bit more, it makes you understand those that, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you would have despised. See, that's the difference. Now you begin to understand the, 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 the truth about what love is. Now you begin to understand that this is the only way you're going to walk the walk. Once your eye becomes, your eyes become open. The only way you're going to be able to walk the walk. If you're really, truly, honestly connecting with Christ, the hope of glory that's in you, the only way you're going to do that is by showing love. Yeah. And I don't, I don't mean, you know, punk, but <laughs> okay <laughs> but and you must walk hardest. in love you got to to help and, people yeah and in the hardest of positions of loving people to love them through the things that they do there you go because you gotta i mean i had to love myself through the things that i've done hmm. right and and you reflect on those things and you're like okay well who am i why do i do those things where did they come from i have to be mm -hmm. able to examine and forgive myself for the things that have been established in me that I know not where they've come. Mm -hmm. I have no idea, but I've, I search and I search. I have to be willing. I have to be willing to say, you know, I'm not perfect. There you go. I'm not perfect. There you go. We've, we've convinced ourselves that we're righteous and we're justified in this and we're righteous and we're justified in that, but we're not. No one is righteous. No, not one. Christ did not lie when he said that. And that's why I actually have a problem with Paul, because every single time I say something about what Christ said, somebody refutes it with something that Paul said. And that's my problem right there. And and uh, really, if we could just park the car there for a second yeah, and just deal sure. with that. So here's the deal. So so if it's Christ that you follow and it could be, you know, Bob the Builder, if Bob the Builder is somebody that you've grown to admire but Christ is who you follow. Why would you listen to Bob the Builder's words over Christ? Christ? And and that part, that's the part that gets me. You know, it's like, it's almost like uh, Paul is the fun parent, right? In the divorce, for example. So Paul's a fun parent. And what Paul does is Paul is like, hey, you know what? You guys can have cookies and ice cream right along with your dinner if you want to. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to eat that dinner. Just have those cookies and eat that ice cream, baby. It's going to be all right. But here's the deal. There was things that was stated that if you do not live a certain kind of way, if you do, you cannot walk around this earth and 
put out nothing but wickedness and evil and expect for good to come back. So what I hear him saying a lot of times is that, and this is what people do, not necessarily even what he said, but what they take from what he said was, I can live like hell and go on up yonder. That don't, it don't work like that. That's not how any of this works. No, you that know is what, not how any of this works. No, he, here's what's amazing is what I find that people don't see about Paul. And this is, again, this is not blaming the same Paul was an evil guy. I have no idea. Um, I wasn't there with him. I can't even tell you, and neither can anybody else for sure, whether Paul actually wrote the the text that he wrote. Um, they they can't verify that it's that it's just attributed to him, like kind of like Mark. People said, oh, you know, the book of Mark was written by Mark. No, it wasn't. None of those books were written by anybody, including John. The book of John was clearly, the gospel of John was clearly written by a female because it was in a female hand in Hebrew, and he, that's very specific. So who knows who wrote what? But I want to say this, but Paul clearly gave people something that Christ was destroying, which was law and rules. Christ was saying, look, you don't need rules. The government rests on your shoulders as it rests on my shoulders, right? The government rests on his shoulders, on Christ. That means you're sovereign. You don't invade on anybody else's place. You Just because the government rests on your shoulders, that means it's only your kingdom that you manage. You don't get to go and invade somebody else's. But Paul, and just like I've experienced here where people said, you know, well, are we allowed to do this or are we allowed to do that? And just what Moses experienced, where they wanted him to give laws, they wanted him to give rules. And he said, I'm giving you these things. Even Jesus said, Moses gave you these rules because of you. He had to give you rules. You were demanding them. And so he had to give you some parameters to live by, but not because you needed them, but because you were demanding them of him and something to live by, your weakness, your lack of the ability to live in Christ. The same was with Paul, and he decided he was going to give people these rules and tell them how they should conduct themselves. Christ never told people to do anything specific except the, the very two specific laws that he said rest the entire law and all the prophets. Love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Mm -hmm. First one, what does that mean to love thy neighbor as thyself? Do you think Jesus would say and give somebody a rule or a law or a command that because he didn't give very many, right? He gave two. Do you think that he would give you the excuse to hate somebody because you hated yourself? No, of course not. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love them as though they are you because you are the same body. Just because you seem separate, you're not. You better love them like they're you because they are you. And if you hate them, you hate yourself. End of story. Understanding that is a much deeper understanding of where we're at, who the creator of all is, and why we're even here in the first place. You know what I want to talk about? Here's what I want to talk about. Because there's always this elephant that's in the room when it comes to understanding history and when it comes to understanding biblical truths. I don't know how we can look at Rome as this innocent little bystander when we think about the way we got to where we are now from King James Bible all the way up to everything that we think we knew that we thought we knew. Here's here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There was a point where Rome uh, during the whole reconstruction and all that other stuff when they you know had to go out here and then they had to deal with the vandals and all those other stuff, all that other stuff. They only flip the script and put in the papacy for control. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, and I'm just playing devil's advocate, pardon the pun. If that's the case, then why is it impossible for us to, be, uh, to understand that there could have been things put in place? Now you got a whole 66, hello, 66, yeah. books when was that ever a good number for god when was right? it ever a good number but here's the deal but we do know that you know that we we're not going to get in the whole sixth thing right now but here's the deal here's what i want to say we do understand that they had something to do with this so why is it that we always get upset with people who bring us some truth or what could be considered truth or what they should even mull over chew on it 
Put it in your back pocket. You may not even use it today, but put it in your back pocket. And when you need it, pull it out. Put it inside of your quiver and pull out that arrow when you just might need it. Pull it out then. You may not believe me now. You may not understand now. But if you understand the Romans and you understand the positioning that they played and you understanding that and you understand it was only done for control, how can you say that we are completely bonkers, that, that we're wrong? Understand that what you have right now has been given to you and it's been given to you to control even to this very day. You have you have the you have you have Catholicism. Mm -hmm. But I tell everybody here, I've gone to the website and they say they are the largest Christian organization in the world. <laughs> and then everybody goes, Oh, uh-huh. Okay, they're the largest. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not like us. No, but they're Christians. Yeah, but don't no, no, but they're the ones who did X, Y, or Z. No, no, but they're not like us. No, 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 they don't have this. And they, do you not get that that's the difference between a denomination and just understanding who you are? I, I, I do this. I don't do this. And I don't do that. You do this. You do this, But it's all Christianity. And mm -hmm. if Christianity came in when Rome wanted to control. Who right. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what are we talking about? Am I yeah. making sense? Yes, of course. Well, all you have to realize is that they were killing Christians right up until the, the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE. So for 325 years after Christ, they were killing everybody that followed him. So then all of a sudden they established Christianity, and now all of a sudden Christians exist legitimately. And they weren't even called Christians. The Bible says they call Christian, but that's the Council of Nicaea editing and adding what, adding what they need, because if you go through the earliest versions of them, those things don't exist. This is where somebody has to do real deeping and real seeking to understand and believe it. But, you know, what happens, Felicia, is the uh, cognitive dissonance, confirmation bias. They won't listen to anything. You know, I've, I see I've seen, you know, a few things and people talking about that. They, they immediately start defending Paul. And it's like it's amazing that in defending Paul, you're defaming Christ, because when we're talking about the things that we're talking about, I'm like, don't you even hear what you're saying? That if you're going to depend, defend Paul in the things that we're talking about, then you're literally defaming Christ, saying that he was a liar, because Paul refutes things that Jesus would say. So, of course, Rome, if they put together an entire council to choose out of 590 books, plus other documentation that weren't considered books, they were just considered spiritual truths or, or you know, some monks' uh, master words that they had written in, uh, on scrolls, they chose very specifically exactly what they wanted and then made sure it read and did exactly what they needed. They're Rome. They controlled the world. Their goal was to control the world and to allow these Abrahamic religions because they were an easier form of control where they didn't actually have to kill people and put them on crosses all the time because that was tough business and feeding Christians to the lions and keeping people entertained and making themselves look good when they're feeding human beings to lions for, for bread and circus. That's kind of hard to, but you know, it starts to wake up people to go, you know, this is kind of cruel. <laughs> I mean, really, it's so for anyone to look at our world, this is my this is where I get the most amazed right now that we've seen today just in how in the last 60 years, 70 years, how the entire planet has been manipulated to manipulated, lied to, um, deceived right in front of your face and they act like they gaslight you and go what what we didn't do that it just we didn't do that of course we love freedom of course we don't do that of course but they do right in front of your face so when when all of these people that come to our channels and have these conversations and then all of a sudden we say hey paul was an agent and he was there to manipulate you into create control they're like we, no that's impossible listen <laughs> constantine and paul sound a lot alike on that road Oh I, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Hey, no, don't don't no don't throw the mud pies over here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check it out. Why does Constantine and Paul sound exactly alike? I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, I wrote 24 pages on the deception of Paul. I still have it. It's somewhere on scribed or something like that. I'll I'll send it to you. It's okay. It just covers every single piece of the scripture and where Paul is um, a liar and even tells you he's a liar and tells you that he's you know gotten you by guile and that he lied to you. So. And he tells you why he's doing it. You know, it's for the greater good. Mm -hmm. But what, what happens in politics today? Oh, it's for the greater good. Look, we're, yeah, we had to lie to you because you couldn't accept the truth. You <laughs> couldn't know the truth, right? We care for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we care. We're just trying to help you out. 
Hey, sure. you know, I, trillion dollars for a war and let us all go <laughs> hungry. Come on now. Okay. Yeah. Now listen, don't get me started on, well, let me be, no, I'm going to talk about this. Look yeah, here. Talk about I, it. This, this is, this is what I like to say to people because I, I, I look at the traits and I look at the uh, examples of different entities, groups, and people. We forget that we have an enemy. And here's the deal. We have a lot of people right now that we see that have, we thought were good. We have a lot of people. One cat that I call Mr. Naranga. Mr. Naranga got me audited in 2017. Because I was ripping and running like a fool. I mean, I was protesting for Mr. Naranga. But he was a tool. Mm -hmm. Oh, people going to throw stuff at me. That's okay. <laughs> Stuff's been thrown before. This guy had me so excited about him. And I'll be honest with you. And I'll tell you that I believe that in the very beginning, this is my personal feeling. feeling I believe that in the very beginning, he meant well. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. And I had several dreams right before my decision changed that he was doing good, but that there was something going on with him. Well, listen, that's the same situation as it was back then. You'll find somebody that you thought was great. Mm -hmm. And then you excuse the fact that they gave the cat a whole entire plot of land with his name on it. But yeah. then you're like, okay, I'm going to let that go. That's okay. That's no problem. You say, I still like him though. I still voted for him. I still got everybody to hate me in the family. They won't even invite me to a, you know, to a dog race, but it's okay. He still means, still means me, well. me well. Then all of a sudden you see his face on a coin with a syringe on it. And you're like, oh, well, no, that's just a syringe and a coin. I, and who cares? It's just, it, but he didn't mean any harm. And then you just keep on going for him. And here comes strike three. You wait and strike three. Strike three is worth speed fast coming after you. And then you're sitting up there talking about, well, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Well, yeah, something wasn't right the first time, the second time, and the third time. But because you want to hold on to this cat, you're going to ride out with them and you cannot understand why things are not going the right way. We got to put our big girl thinking caps and big boy thinking caps and our chonies on. And we have to begin to really honestly say, I don't, I don't want to talk about no humans. Let me drop all the humans. Now I want you to show me who you are and I'm going to be bold enough to accept you for who you are. When you show me father creator of all, when you show me who you are, I'm going to accept that. And I'm going to accept the fact that I'm going to lose a lot of friends. I'm going to lose a lot of relatives. I'm going to lose a lot of associates and acquaintances because understanding truth means I've got to be willing to let go of Paul. Mm -hmm. I've got to be willing to let go of Reverend oh. Porkchop. Yep. I got Reverend Porkchop. I got to be ready to get rid of him and the women's auxiliary groups and all these. I got to, somebody going to get upset, but I need to be free. Yeah. And you cannot be free if you are bound by a doctrine, if you are bound by that apple cart that somebody just got to come by and kick over in order for you to let it all go. <laughs> I love your fire. No, that's totally it. You've got to be willing to let go of certain things that you just don't want to let go of when you understand these things. And it includes your pastor. You are, you and I were talking and you, you know, my pastor is Pastor Jack Hayford. Pastor Jack is called the pastor of pastors. I love, I love yeah. that. I loved my pastor, Dr. Price, when I was growing up. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I went to Bible college under him. I sat, literally sat only a couple of feet with him, followed and traveled with him. I used to sing, uh, I used to minister uh, before he would go and before anybody, you know, like uh, John Cherry or mm -hmm. uh, any of the big cats would come in, I would have to do, I would minister solo or whatever. And, and that was great. But again, that's just garbage now. You know what I mean? Because even though I sat under them, it made me a little bit upset. Well, let me say this. I was a little bit upset and then I was a little happy. I was happy that I studied under him because he taught me how to really, really dig and dig and dig and dig. Now, when I listen back to some of the stuff that he was talking about, I see the nuggets of truth that Dr. Price knew. But of course, people get a little, um, they feel like I cannot say everything that I know because I don't want to compromise X, Y, or Z. Okay, so that was him. But now I listen back, I see. So I like the fact that I learned to study, but I also like the fact that um, I was able to see a lot of crap mm -hmm. being as high up in the ministry as I was. I was able to see a lot of stuff that I know now was not right. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why I had to go from those larger places. And now I'm, I'm this person who, you know, I don't hang out with anybody. Yeah. I don't, I don't have that big buzz around me. You know what I mean? I don't have the fanfare and all those people. I don't have any of that with me yeah. and I'm cool. And I'm, I'm cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah, you and you know because when you when you find that, 
um, you know, it's amazing because I went to uh, uh, Pastor Jack and I said to him, you know, I, I basically asked him these questions. When Christ said this, he meant this, right? When Christ said this, he meant this, right? Yes, he did. I was like, then why do you preach X, Y, Z? And he goes, well, that's very difficult for people to understand. And I can't necessarily um, bring that up because that will be the sole focus of what people focus on. I was like, of course it is, because that's what Christ is. That's He was explaining to you that you're living in his day. You're walking in his footsteps and you're going to endure what he endured. You're going to witness what he witnessed. You are going to be the same time. The people across the river that was cast out, the, that, that were cast out, right? Why were the 5,000 people on the other side of the river away from civilization? That's because mm -hmm. they were cast out. Why were there um, sick societies, right? Where the rabbis told you whether you had a disease mm -hmm. or not and kicked mm -hmm. you out of the synagogue. All of that stuff's happening today. And it's the same thing, either a mental position or a physical, right? First, it was mm -hmm. a a physical one. And now today it's a psychological one or a belief one. If you don't believe X, Y, Z of what they say the government says or about how they're handling different types of people being very sensitive to the content here. So we don't trigger algorithms and get this. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> All of the different issues about what we're seeing today about kids and, and, um, and products and what they're marketing, they're marketing bail, which is, you know, Moloch, which is child, you know, sacrifice things, crazy things, things that you just can't even comprehend that they're doing right in front of your face. Christ was pointing out the same things then and explaining why and who they're doing this for. And the same thing is happening today. And our father, the creator of all, is begging us to hear his voice, begging us to, to leave the world begging us to hear this basic truth. And that basic truth is, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That's going to show you who they are. You will know them by their fruits. Who are they sacrificing? Boy, it's all over the place. They're sacrificing everybody for their agenda. Well, come on now. They're giving up their most sacred cows for the agenda. All of it. All of it. All it's, of it. All of it. And so, you know, when I, when I talked about it, and then I had to empathize and actually forgive my own pastor. And I told him this. Oh, wow. And I said, I forgive you. I said, because you're just John. You're just John. You're John, the one that was in the wilderness saying that he's coming. Mm -hmm. And now that he's come, you know you can't reverse yourself on the things that you've taught. And you're wearing that nice belt and wearing those nice clothes. And that's what Jesus said. You know, did you not go out to see that guy with those nice clothes? <laughs> what were you expecting? But mm -hmm. and Paul said, I must decrease and he must increase because I can't say what he says. But mm -hmm. what he says is true. And that's essentially what my pastor said to me. What you say is true, Derek. And I'm like, then why the hell oh, yeah. have I been to you for years? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, most and, assuredly. And he could not answer me. And this is a man that could answer anything. Pastor Jack was the pastor of pastors. I'm like, yeah, you Pastor Hayford was the business. <laughs> he was business. I mean, serious. I was astonished. And it really threw me. It really threw It's still to this day, I think about it. It still messes with me. I'm like, I can't believe he wasn't, he didn't have it in him to do this. Mm -hmm. He didn't have it in him to do what I'm doing right now. Well, <clears throat> this is what I think. Um, I think that the generation that we are, because I'm a 64 baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years older than you, but I think the generation that we are, we went through the teachings that we went through for such a time as this. Um, and, and I also believe that when people hear some of the, I want to impress everybody to understand that when you hear the things I'll speak for myself that I say, research what I'm saying and mm -hmm. don't disagree. If you choose to disagree, do like I said before, put the arrow inside your quiver and pull it out. Once you've come to, you know, the knowledge of what I'm talking about, and then you'll have that bit of weaponry so that you can put it in your bow and do what you need to do. Okay. Um, but, but I, I truly and honestly would love to see everybody stop calling people a heretic or a blasphemer, especially when you still have the lens of Rome. If you have not set down the lenses that Rome has given you, mm -hmm. okay, then you cannot say what somebody is doing. If you still have on those other goggles, you got to take the ones that was it Roddy Roddy Piper in that movie. When yeah. he put the other ones on and he could see, he saw he had his regular eyes, but then he put those other things on. He's like, whoa, what is going on here? 
You got to come out of that, come out of her means. You got to let it all go and be willing. Like I tell everybody here, put it all back in your Felix bag of tricks. Take your bag, empty it all out, and then start adding pieces to pieces. Because the only way for you to become free is to understand the difference between the lies that you've been told and some of the truth that you heard. But you got to get rid of the lie in order for you to see. And that's what it's all about. Listen. I don't have a heaven or a hell, Derek, to put anybody in. Mm -mm. What I do have is some understanding based upon my life experiences, some of the things that I've gone through, some of the dark, dark paths that I've had to go through in my life. I have those things. And with those things, knowing who I am now, I can love others because I can see who I was. And I could remember what my heart was at that time. So that's all I got for people right now is to love them. Yeah. It's to love. Now I want to ask you some questions. I want to talk to you about something. Mm -hmm. Speaking of loving people, even when they're cranky or mean to us, how do you handle adversity when it comes your way? When, when, when it comes from like in this type of setting, I'm not talking about the personal stuff in our lives because we all got stuff, right? But how do you handle it? Cause you just hit a hundred thousand subs. Yeah. How, how do you do it? Well, you know, um, we're not always good at it, but mm-hmm. when it comes to the subscribers and the things that I talk about and, um, and how I've been attacked and death threats, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you, you name it, been called the heretic. And, and I usually just respond with, well, they said the same thing about Jesus. So I'm in good company. Um, you know, and he said that it would happen to me if I say his words, right? If I follow him and I do what he's doing, he said, he promised it, he guaranteed it. So, uh, you know, he's not lying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and of course it happens. Um, I early on had to shut it off in my mind to not make it. It's not personal because they don't know, me, mm-hmm. right? It's not personal. They don't know me. It's personal for them. Right. So they're offended and it's their problem. It's not my issue. But that doesn't mean that that's how I handle adversity in my personal life, because we've never you know, we've always got to fix that because we're always right. At least we're orchestrating ourselves that way. Mm-hmm. When it comes to this, I'm not right. Christ is right. Come on now. Because he was honest in it. Right. Yes. So I don't have to worry about me being right when it comes to this. Somebody else was already right. And I'm just following what he did in my personal life. We all got work to do every single one of us at how we handle our personal adversity. That is personal. Right. But when it comes to this, when it comes to to me, to talking about Christ, I don't care what anybody says about me. It's irrelevant. I watch them and I, it's actually, you know, I empathize and sympathize with them because I can see such deep indoctrination when somebody says, no, the Bible is the word of God. I'm like the word of God that was written and orchestrated by Caesar, (laughs) <laughs> right? Really? I mean, at, at what point the word of God was assembled 2000 years ago or less than 2000 years ago? What happened before that? Why are there scriptures that are 45,000 years old in cuneiform that tell the same stories that the Hebrew Bible supposedly wrote for the first time? So I'm sorry, we don't get to argue and debate those things. When somebody wants to debate this stuff, it's like, look, there's, there's actual fact, but still even the 45,000 year old script doesn't mean that it's true and so but it doesn't mean that the ones that came after that plagiarized it are true but what we could do is we can glean from this stuff and then look inside ourselves because the answer the universe gives us the father gives us the answers when we want to know the truth he will tell us he will show us but we've got to be willing to dump what we think is true the father's never going to be able to speak to you you will never see the truth unless you're willing to die to what you thought was true it just begins there So when you say, put that in your quiver, right? It doesn't have to be an arrow that you're willing to use. It's Mm -hmm. an arrow you like. It doesn't have to be an arrow. And you don't know what that arrow does. And you don't know when you might need it. So don't waste it. Hey, I don't like that, but crap, I might need that at some point in time. (laughs) (laughs) Put that in there just in case case that shit is true. (laughs) Just in case. They might be right. You know, here's the thing. And and, and I love to think about Kazaria. That's that's what I was talking about earlier when I was saying, what if? I'm going to just go ahead and lay it on out there. You know, when we think about serving both sides of war and paying for both sides of war, Mm -hmm. um. Whenever, whenever I hear you say, especially you said it twice tonight when you said, you know, the, the Hebrews. Um, so uh, 
the reason why we got Kanye and a whole lot of other people in trouble and the reason why they're so willing to sacrifice this bit of truth for people is because y'all need to go look that up. <laughs> I'm going to say that y'all need to go look that up yeah. because here's the deal. I truly, I'm one of these people who do believe that there has been a really large, um, there's been a, a heavy, heavy weight that's been thrown out there. And that heavy weight is we don't want you to understand what truth is. So we're going to go on ahead the largest and, and exact, the largest uh, size of identity theft on the planet. Mm -hmm. Kazaria has traits. They funded both sides of war. Everybody was able to go to Kazaria and get what they needed. And Kazaria would reap the, the, the benefits. They would take a spoil, a part of the booty. Okay. The same situation is going on right now. Those individuals are not the Hebrews. They stole from the Hebrews with the help of Hebrews. And so yeah. I think that once, and, 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 and that's another door that we have to go through. We have to go through that door to understand it. And if you want to start it, you in general, if you want to start it with just, you know, even breaking down the whole lineage of Noah's children, you can go there. You can go beyond that. Now, if you go outside the garden and start there, you even better if you know how to do that. But a lot of people shut themselves off to truth because they've been told by their master that this is what truth is. And if it doesn't look like this, then it cannot be true. What if you found out that you were inside of a box all of this time and that box had what you thought you wanted in it. But in that box, you felt a little uncomfortable. You weren't able to eat well. You didn't have anything that sustained you well. You didn't, there was, there was something that was missing. You're not comfortable in that box. What if you realize that box is what the problem is? Mm -hmm. Get out the box. And I'm not talking about who's still out of the box. No, I'm talking about get up out that box. Get up out that cube. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. There's something outside that cube. What if what you really, really need to understand is someplace else and you die and you leave here never having lived in this realm? Then you find out maybe you're in another realm somewhere. You start scratching your head like, wait a minute, where is this? Y'all, mm -hmm. I don't mean to throw y'all off, but I really do mean to wreck your, your night. <laughs> yeah. I mean to wreck your night. I didn't come here to have a conversation with my with friend my here, here and make everybody not leave with some thinking. I want you to get a little a little upset. I want but here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a little upset and concerned enough to go study it out and prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Yeah, don't just say I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Yeah. And you know what? Come on back and let's sit down to the, the the table of discussion and come to the table of agreement and and have a conversation about what we all know. That way it's okay. It's healthy. But here's what you do when you shut off other people. You do exactly what they told you to do two and a half for two and a half almost years now. Stay this far away. Don't get up close. Don't get in his ear. Don't get in her ear. Don't get real close and learn from each other. Stay back. Don't touch. Back, back. If you do that long enough, then you will never continue to learn. Who are you going to learn from? The computer only has regurgitated information that's been put into it by humans. Hello? I don't it's know. Yeah, it's amazing to watch the dogma come out immediately as soon as you you know you start talking about these things. You 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 even question what the Bible has in it for anybody, mm. which is which amazes me by the way. But they'll immediately go, "Oh, the Bible is the infallible Word of God." It's oh, it's so infallible that we need forty four thousand plus different versions. Mm. So all with publishing rights. Oh, yeah, all with publishing rights and all sorts of stuff. And it's amazing, you know. Somebody asked again, you know, in in the chat before we started the show that said. I'm still trying to find out whether Derek is a Christian. And I was like, well, let me uh, first just ask you which version of the 44,000 denominations of Christianity would you be asking about? Or how about the 14,000 plus versions of the Bible? Or how about all of the plagiarized texts that predated the Bible by 30,000 years? How about that? I mean, should I, should I not recognize that that's the word of God? Did the word of God just happen, you know, just under 2000 years ago? Is that how this worked? And what is a Christian? Seriously, is a Christian the one that starts wars and prints $3 trillion and kills four and a half million people in Iraq? Is that a Christian country? Is it a Christian country? Are we a Christian nation that we came here and killed 120 million natives when we said that they were a bunch of barbarians and that there was no civilization here? I'm sorry, 120 million people in this part of the land. That's, that's you know, just less than half the size of our country today. 
It's crazy. So uh, what what is it that's Christian to you? Please help me with these definitions. And when you tell me that, you know, that um, that we don't experience the meat of Christianity or scripture or any of that. Well, that's why people get mad, because all they want us to do is give them milk. We want to give them milk so they can, you know, start sucking on it and go, yep, yep. That's the same thing that I know. I'm so happy that I know the truth. I'm so happy that my mom and dad were right. I'm so happy. So I can just move on and not worry about it. And sin forever because i'm always going to be saved once saved i'm always saved yeah. and i've so, got my i've got my flavian flavored milk to help me along the way i've yeah. got my flavian flavored milk and i've got my constantine biscuits and i've got the roman catholic church as my um as my dessert and this is all i need because i'm a christian mhm <laughs> Y'all better get up out of that mess and start studying. Time is winding down. Yeah. Quit all of this. All of this stuff y'all doing, knock all of that off. Knock it off. Y'all better get someplace and study. You better yeah. study to show yourself approved. You sure enough better because if you do not get someplace and study and all you're doing is, you know, biting people and attacking people because they're coming to you with something that's a little different than what you were indoctrinated to believe, you're going to be lost. Yeah, it's crazy. But see, think about this, Felicia. It's or taken up by a spaceship that's really not, it's like a project of something. It's not a real space. It's not real. It's just a, it's just a spaceship that they're going to stick up in the sky. And because you believe a certain type of way, you're going to be looking up, waiting for Sky Daddy to jump on down here. You're going to be looking is. for something that is not what the word says. The word does not say a lot of the stuff that you've been indoctrinated to believe in. Y'all better let that go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all better let that go and let it go now because trust me, when it says he comes on the cloud, well, the word for cloud is it's not on the cloud, it comes in the spirit, but they chose cloud. So now we have this version, which is literally a Hollywood version of Jesus. I mean, that's not how this works in this 3D world. Um, the this 3D corrupt world, if anything happens outside of what this 3D world can and should produce, then it's going to be manufactured for the sake of your psychological manipulation. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to do that because they don't want you to be standing in Christ and what that actually means. Mm. And, you know, that's not, but it, it, it truly amazes me that when you start walking as Christ, these people that say they're Christians can't see the Christ that you're walking because they never understood Christ in the first place. And they make Christ a liar by their arguments, like even in this chat, they make him a liar. The When he promised that you would be persecuted, if you're going to your church and you're saying the Bible's the word of God and you're carrying and getting your Starbucks at the lobby because they've got a Starbucks in your church now. And an ATM. And you're, in, and you're having your donuts and you put your $50 in the basket when it comes by and you're listening to the pastor regurgitate crap and indoctrinate you and teach you how to refute people like Felicia and myself with these indoctrinated stages, with these words that Christ never said, that the that the Bible is the infallible word of God. Did Jesus ever say that? Who said that? Who said that? And why do you believe them? What, did Jesus not complete what he needed to say? Did he not say everything that he needed to say? He needed a 13th apostle because he, gosh dang it, he screwed up on the 13th, on the, on the 12th, right? <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like you make Jesus an idiot. Mm. Trust in what he said. Trust in what he was doing. Trust what he was trying to accomplish. Trust in what he, why he was conducting himself in the way, why he had to be parabolic for most of it and said, now I'm speaking to them in parables, but one day I'm going to speak in plain English. Mm. And the second thing he spoke in plain English, he sounded a lot like Kanye West. And guess what? Mm. They killed him for it. Mm. I've been saying? trying to get a hold of Kanye. This I'm trying great. to get a hold of Kanye. I'm trying to get Kanye. I really want to interview Kanye. So if anybody knows Kanye, you know me. I want to <laughs> talk to that child. I want to. I want to hug that child. I really do. I want to mother that child. Oh, uh, he's I been. Really he's, do. He, he's been. He's been a man. Now I'm not going to say that he's not being played on behalf. Well, he's being of played on a lot of oh, ways. Yeah, ever, that's what I'm saying. There is no such thing as something that is good that doesn't get corrupted. You start it good, it gets corrupted. Even in myself, I had to admit this, right? So I start as good, but all of a sudden, because of the pressures and the things that I myself, without recognizing it, get corrupted. And I had to dig inside myself and go, whoa, wait, mm -hmm. I got to stop that. That's how subtle the enemy is, man. Oh, he, yes. He finds his ass into there. Oh, yeah. And, nope. Nope. I'm going to completely, constantly go back to this. And I'm going to completely draw back. Exactly. It but, is the small foxes that spoil the vine. 
Yeah, but remember the, the when you talk about the Khazarians and Khazars, right? Mm. The, the, the Khazars adopted Judaism for political expediency. They're not real Jews, which is why Jesus could very clearly say, for they say they are Jews, but they do lie. Mm -hmm. And they were Talmudic Jews, which mm -hmm. is Babylonian Talmud. It wasn't written down until 500 years after the fact, right? But that was called the oral law, which he spoke about it. You have all of your oral traditions, all of your Babylonian Talmud. You literally work for Rome. He called them out. He told them who their father is. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning and a liar from the beginning and the father of the lie. Mm. That's an amazing statement. Think oh, I it. wish that if Roy was here with Roy as well as my brother, Ronnie, this would be a great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this would be great. A lie. What was the lie? Mm -hmm. Is that Satan is God. Mm. That's a lie, mm. right? They wanted you to worship him. He's the father of their, the father of that lie. I'm going to give you the screen. I want you to explain that. Go ahead and explain that. The lie is that Satan is God. Satan, ex the scripture is very clear to say Satan exalted himself on high, placed himself on the throne, and calls himself God. So I basically just try to ask everybody all the time is, where are the evil works of Satan in the Bible? If it's the word of God and Satan is so bad, then show me the evil works of Satan. You don't find them. Satan didn't do anything evil in the Bible. He didn't. In fact, when Satan showed up, for Abraham, when he was going to sacrifice his kid, it was an old man and, and, and this little old man of Satan, who just means, you know, he's your opposition. So this little old man that shows up says, God would never ask you to kill your child. But yet scripture calls him Satan. But then they say, Lord, in like 2 Samuel chapter 24, where they say, Lord, the Lord encouraged David to count the people for taxation and war. And he counted the people. And then he had to apologize for doing exactly what God asked him to do. So because that was Satan, if you look at it in in uh, in uh, First Chronicles, the same story happens in First Chronicles, and you'll see that it's actually the word Satan that asked him to do that. But yet it's God and one other. So you have all of these evil works where God comes to his servants and asks him to kill every man, woman and child and everything that creeps, walks and crawls. Right. Everything. All of it. The, the cockroaches, the ants, it creeps, mm -hmm. walks and crawls. Kill it all. Mm. It's bloodlust. Well, this is the father that Jesus spoke of that says, my father desires mercy, not sacrifice. What is it that the ants and the roaches had to do with anything? People say, oh, it was the bloodlines of people. Well, then why did he ask him to kill the ants and the roaches and the, the rodents? What, what's the problem here? You got to understand that they have convinced the world to worship Satan because this is his place. When you said earlier, Felicia, when you said, I don't have a heaven or hell to put somebody in. no. We only have our own heaven and hell that we put ourselves in. We either stand in the kingdom or we stand in hell. And that's where we've got to get to that place. The dark night of the soul, the willing witness is willing to go into hell and kill Satan within ourselves again, over and over, as long as that guy shows up in us. Because if Christ lives within us, then Satan lives within us too. He is the opposition. He's the opposition. He's the voice in your mind that tells you to do something and gives you all the reasoning behind it why you're right and why you're in the good spot, and teaches you how to manipulate yourself. That's the enemy. He gets you to do his bidding. In the same way the Father invites you to do his. Do his. Just speak my word. Speak my love. Be my love. You will know them by their fruits. When you got people attacking Christians or attacking people like you or I for saying these things, saying you're leading all these people to hell, it's like, wait a minute, all the people that we've talked to are Christians. I thought they were saved and always saved, right? Once saved, always saved. What's your concern? If they're already saved, how can I take them to hell? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh now that. That's some good eating right there. That's the word. That really is truly, honestly, good news. That's meat. That's and meat. It is good news. And it is good news because you're free of all of this stuff. You just have to understand you're free of it. Mm -hmm. Like It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility. But it's not your fault. It's my responsibility to deal with the enemy in me. But it's not my fault. So mm -hmm. it's my responsibility to handle it, to be better about it. To understand him and understand and be and live in Christ and walk in that and know what that means and fight to live with that every single day and to be better and better and better and to understand people and to love people deeper and more understanding. But my issues in this world, we don't even know where they come from. 
your issues. You don't even know. It's not just your mom and dad or your grandpa or their grandpa or your great, great, great and grandpa. It's, it is a system. It is a church. It is indoctrination. It is manipulation. It is literally the enemy that runs this world that has deceived everybody. And in order for us to be free and stand in sovereignty and stand with our creator and our love and feel him, really feel him and go, I feel you now. I'm back. I can feel you speaking. I could feel you moving me. I can see your works in me. I watch. I live in love and you reward me. Bang, right there. I live in love here and bang, you help me here. You show me something new and something more beautiful. You bring me some more attention. You you caress me when I needed it. Hmm. You just start living it and ignore the rest of the world and ignore hateful thoughts or vent. You just ignore them transmute them, change them. Nope. I love them. I'm going to pray for that person. Mm. Love them. I'm going to send them all I've got in love because I know they're tortured. Like I am. I know they're tortured. Like I've been, I know they're deceived. Like I've been. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's where we must be. And that is the willing witness. And that's why I'm still doing this. And I'm so happy to know that um, you were able to come on tonight and explain exactly what the willing witness is. Yeah. And, and it makes so much sense now. And I know there's a lot of people who can possibly identify with it now that they understand in its totality um, what it really means. So I understand you're going to be going out to different uh, meeting with different people and going into different churches. Does that also mean that you're going out on the highways and byways and with your, with your backpack, your crocus sacks and your dungarees on? Wherever I'm guided, wherever I'm shown to go and whoever accepts my, you know, my invitation and it's, you know, my invitation is not going to be confrontational or anything. You know, that's where um, it, things have changed. I've had a few conversations with a couple of pastors. I, you know, pretty big mega pastors. I didn't think would agree. And I said, you know, I have a channel and here are my concerns about Christianity, where it's gone and all that. And, and I just, I, I would love to be able to, to hear your legitimate theological response to what I've seen. And, um, not to attack you or say you're wrong and not for you to attack me and say I'm wrong, but just for us to explore maybe a deeper understanding of Christ. And they were like, we would love to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see how, let's see how well that goes when I sit down with the camera and make some statements. So let me ask you something. Um, you get this guy out of here. <laughs> what, <laughs> what does 2023 look like for you as far as, I know you're not, you know, you're not somebody who's going to say, well, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z, but I know that you are a man who has been in, in business. And, and, and once we've been in business, we have a way that we know we need to make a template, but because your life is not your own, you can be subject to change here. So what does 2023 look like for you? And let me ask you this, what does your relationship with your subscribers what is that going to look like quite different um 2023 i have no idea i i i i truly want to try to live today right of now of course oh Literally. yeah i'm with that i'm with that 110 percent. yeah um i'm going to continue to do what father asked me to do when he says you know or, or gives me a message or something that i've a download that i felt and fully understand and think that it, and i kind of i i seem to always have a a feeling about what people are feeling. Mm -hmm. And so um, well, you're empathetic to what yeah, they're experiencing. And that weighs on me all the time. So I kind of uh, am given things to address there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people would say um, that I'm changing things or I saw somebody say I'm reinventing. There mm -hmm. is no reinvention because you're constantly being, pulled and pushed and changed and there is nothing that is constant anybody that is that thin in their thinking and understanding will never understand somebody like you or myself or anybody that talks and does this because this is not an easy this is not easy you know this right is this is not at all no it's not it's not easy and it's it's really not rewarding it's not you're not getting a whole bunch of rewards with the exception of people in the chat saying, oh i love this and thank you very much so what other reward is there? I'm not looking for one. I'm looking only for me being rewarded by my father for doing what I'm supposed to be doing and not doing what I'm not supposed to be doing and correcting myself when I need to be corrected. So 2023 is going to be just me being better, better. And that means that things are going to change because there was a lot of toxicity that I've learned. And when you said ha handling adversity and stuff like that, well, it's not just the adversity, but it's also the amount of pressure that you get 
from people to manage and to always be there to inspire or always be there to say that uplifting word. It's like, what if I'm not in an uplifting mood right now? How about what, that? What if I'm not that guy? You can't worship me like I'm Jesus. I'm not. He was killed. Do I live and try to walk in Christ? Yes. Am I imperfect? Yes. Am I Jesus? No. No. But here's the whole thing. They the, they have this version of who Jesus is, too. Mm -hmm. this is there was two Jesuses, though, that we know of. It's probably a very common name and not, not with the J, you know, not, not with the whole J piece, yeah. but that particular, at that particular time, during Golgotha and all that. Well, there's many people that believe that John was Jesus. Mm. That John's transition that I must decrease and he must increase that he mm. became Christ. Mm. And that's why many of the Mason, you know, the Masonic order and everything, they worship the head of John that he was mm. decapitated. So, and that Jesus's brother continued on his ministry because he was the twin, Thomas, the twin. Mm -hmm. so okay. Jesus was that there's a man. I mean, that's actually deep Illuminati stuff. Mm. So I'm not saying it's true, but it's like, but I um, understand I what, you, at, what you're saying. I could, it, I could look at it and go, I could see how they could have come up with that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and created somebody to worship. But the reality is they people want to worship a man. It's like, no, if you're going to worship a man, it's going to be worshiping the Christ within you. And it's never going to be you that you're worshiping in the physical form, but Christ in you. Mm -hmm. Thankful mm -hmm. that there's something there to keep you in order because you're a mess. Mm -hmm. And we live in a 3D world in a corrupt body with a corrupt mind, and we constantly have to keep that snake in order. And we got to pay attention to it. And so, no, none of us are going to be perfect. There is no Jesus that shows up that is perfect. And people say Jesus had no sin. If he was in this life as a man and he experienced everything that was experienced in a man and he could sympathize mm -hmm. and empathize with all of us and talk to us about our sin, then he experienced all of our sin as well. The now you talking, go ahead. <laughs> the, the difference is they said he was without sin. Okay, guess what? Right now, I'm without sin because I've repented for it. I haven't committed any sin in repentance. You're going to sin constantly, but I'm without it because I know I'm not guilty of it, but I'm always addressing it. So I'm not guilty of it. So I have none because it's not mine, but I got to manage it in my life. And that is mine. My responsibility of my sin is mine. The sin isn't mine. I'm not guilty. Father's not sending me to some terrible place because I'm in a world that he couldn't do right. I'm in a body that he couldn't correct and make perfect. You're not held guilty for that because this isn't his works. The works of our corruption are the enemies of a perfect set, of a perfect understanding of who we are in a perfect being. We are a light being. The difference is we're put here in this 3D world and this 3D world is corrupted. And this is where it takes place. We're not guilty of it here. However, we're never going to allow ourselves to go home. And to stand with our father, carrying what we carry, because we still carry the guilt and the shame of what we have. This is why being in Christ means you don't hold yourself guilty. That doesn't mean that you don't hold yourself accountable, but you're not guilty. You got to repent. You got to fix it. You got to always do what you have to do to be better. You got to be a willing witness, willing to witness yourself in hell, fighting the enemy, dealing with him and coming back and being better and correcting everything you can correct. You know, I have a son and I know we're, we're about to, we're about to close and I want to drag your time out. I wish you could just stay. But anyway, I have a son and, um, he's my 31 year old, no, my 32 year old, he's my 32 year old child. Um, and he is so far beyond his, his years. He explained to me some things that he had experienced and he has experienced over the past several years. What you just described was what he um, has experienced. He, he's gone through some traumatic things, but he described that as hell on earth, some of those traumatic things. Yeah. And he understands people now to the point where he's silent when they say or do certain things. He's literally just silent because he doesn't want to go into that vein where he's now judging them. Mm-hmm. He just believes if he sits back a little bit, he can, they'll get it. And, and I, and I want to say that originally when he started talking about certain things several years ago, I flipped 
Oh my goodness, what are you talking about? You are not, I didn't raise you that way. I raised you in the church and you're not supposed to talk about this or that. But now when I look back at how kooky I was, I realized that that child was right on a lot of the things that he said. And these things were not imparted to him by a person. These things came to him because of him being in deep thought and in deep prayer at that time. We mm -hmm. said prayer, but de definitely, you know, intercede, praying for himself and interceding mm -hmm. about others. But the point I'm making is you're not going to understand any of the things that we're saying if you're not willing to think, not willing to accept the fact that we might be right. Yeah. And listen, I want to say this. This is really important. I'm not perfect. And I've not achieved every bit of knowledge or information. I'm still learning. I'm not going backwards. I do know that. Yeah. But I'm still learning. We're still learning. And as we're still learning, it's just like a collision course that you're taking when you're in a plane, you're going down on the course. And all of a sudden you got to land and you're trying to hope that the landing comes up. It's only at a certain altitude that you're smooth. But while you're learning this stuff, you're going to go up and down. You're going to have some bumps. You're going to do some things. You're going to learn a little bit. You're going to get uncomfortable. You're going to take a couple of steps back. Here's what I'm telling you guys. Do not hold on so long to wrong that you do not understand that the opportunities are limitless when it comes to your area of growth. You are going to continue to learn day by day. You're going to realize that you made a couple of mistakes and you're going to back those up. You're going to ask for forgiveness. You're going to forgive yourself. You're going to move forward. But these are the things that my baby did. My child went through some, some hellified stuff that I could not understand. But what he did do was he had enough sense to understand that he was living through his own personal hell. Mm hmm I hope I'm talking to somebody. I really do feel like it may seem like it's a little off what I'm saying, but I truly and honestly believe there's somebody out there that understands what I'm where I'm coming from. You may be struggling right now. You may not understand half the stuff we're saying. Maybe only 2% of what we're talking about is resonating with you. And if that's the case, keep going. Mm -hmm. Don't worry that it may not be absolutely right the way that you get it. You continue to stay and ask the creator to help you because he's the only one who can lead you. Okay. Oh. The only way that you can be led is by him leading you, but you have to be willing and you have to be, you have to want to participate in this yeah. learning and shedding off of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. So whoever that's for, that's for you. Okay. Whoever is for y'all know how I am over here. I just float away. He give it to me. That's all I can do. I can only float away. He give it to me. So it may sound a little out there or whatever to somebody else. That's okay, baby. It was not for you. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, th th this is new wine, and and it needs to be put into a new wine skin. So when it expands, it doesn't burst, right? That's so. This is the whole thing. Before you hear any of us, you've got to make sure that the wine skin that this new wine is going into can handle the expansion of what's going to happen once you understand it. And that's really what the new wine skin is. You can't put new wine in old wine skins. It's going to blow them up. So that's what you're trying to prepare people for. And, you know, you're talking about your son going through his own hell. Yes, this is ours. And we got to realize that we create it, too. Oh, come on. That's what I was about to say. Mm, say we that. in this. And this is when, you know, you realize, wait a minute, I'm helping create this living hell. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Once you can see it, you're like, whoa, hands off. Nope, I'm, I'm done. I surrender now. It's no longer mine. I can't believe it. I've been participating in this. I can't believe I helped it. I thought I was doing something good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah, this is, this is exactly how the enemy, someone, some people say, um, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're controlled opposition or something. Well, Hey, I'm controlled by something. I, I don't, I don't know who it is, but I can tell you one thing. I'm not controlled by your government because otherwise I wouldn't be trying to, to get you to walk away from them. Mm -hmm. mm. I wouldn't be trying to get you to see that they're not your government, that you are. I wouldn't be doing any of this because first of all, Again, um, doing this and saying these things, eventually they're going to come and they're going to try to shut you down. They're going to try to disrupt what's powerful in your life. They're going to try to mess with things, which, which good. When you've built up, the father's built something up, the enemy's going to come in right away. When does oh, yeah. the enemy arrive? The second Christ shows up, the enemy's going to rise up. 
So we have to understand these attacks and we've got to be focused on what the father intended. Those messages that he gives us and what he intends for us to accomplish do not change. He doesn't change his mind. He set out for me to do X, Y, Z. He set out for me to be involved in something really powerful, a huge testimony, massive miracles. How that happens, I don't know, but it's gonna. Mm. And so I just step back from it and go, Father, you know what? I don't get to control this. I can't control it. And when I think I can, boy, all I do is mess things up. <laughs> so I'm stepping back. So that's my relationship with my subscribers is going to be not a relationship, but I am going to have to support myself through this I'm going to have to, you know, we were talking about that, how you monetize this shit. How do you continue to do this and be able to survive? I don't. I had to go get a job just recently. <laughs> I'm delivering Uber. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm telling good. you. I'm, but you know what? Here's what, here's what, I, well, segue just a little bit and then you get right back there. Listen, I, I, I marvel at how I can look at another different things. And then I say, well, it's okay. It's all right. They're, they're lost. So they probably need it on this side. I don't know. But I look at how the funding for garbage mm -hmm. is so plentiful. Oh yeah. But then the funding for truth is so skinny. Oh, it is not so there. slim. It's yeah. It's nothing there, but nothing. go ahead. I'm gonna let you go. Go, go. Talk, 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 talk. Yeah. No, they, they, uh, you know, when you got like, I went to monetize, you know what they called my content trying to monetize my channel on YouTube. They said it's dangerous content. Oh like, yeah. Dangerous according to who? I mean, danger? What, me telling you about scripture and ancient scriptures and ancient aliens and stuff? This is dangerous? It's We, we have really entered a world that is uh, an incredible place, and we're blessed to be able to see it. I mean, honestly, I mean, this is why Christ could say that many prophets of old wished they saw these days, yet they were miserable and they were crucifying him. They wished they saw them because then at least they know that what they had been saying was actually true because they're watching it come to fruition. So we are blessed with the ability to look at, wake up every single day, read the headlines and go, well, there it is. <laughs> you know, there. I mean? <laughs> Prophets didn't have that. They had to actually believe in what they said with no evidence. And then they were killed on top of that. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, we should be thankful for that. It was amazing that I had a video removed by YouTube the other day. I tweeted about this. It was the video that I had on my channel for, I mean, it was, it was the, the main trailer on my channel, the government's virus for your mind. I made it like four and a half years ago. And, um, and they, and I didn't mention COVID or anything. This is way before COVID. This is two years before COVID. And they said, um, they took it down for medical information about COVID-19. <laughs> I was like, how could I have medical misinformation about something that took place two years after I said it? It's either either I'm a prophet and then you have to admit it and reinstate my thing. That's why I said in my appeal. Either I'm a prophet and you have to admit that I'm a prophet and reinstate my video or somehow somebody knew that this was happening and fed me this information. Well, I gave mm -hmm. you two choices. So guess what? They reinstated the video and the very next day. <laughs> took it down. down again <laughs> for the same reason. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to say this. I, I, I am very happy that, you know, we, we, we are monetized here. All right. I'm happy, but I understand that as easy as they gave it, they could take it away. So that's the reason why I say, I'm just going to cry loud and spare not because my inevitable source, my source, it ain't them. No, mm -mm. he makes a way. The, the creator of all makes a way. I'll tell you that we have never gone, uh, uh, you know, the kids said we've never gone without eating. We, I don't, do I look like it? No, I eat. <laughs> they eat. Everybody eat. But he makes sure that we're taken care of. He gives us the provision. And so that's the reason why I say it's better for me to cry loud and spare not than for me to, you know, told this little line or just get out here and start tap dancing. Yes, a master. What you want me to say today? How you want me to talk now? I'm not doing all of that. That ain't me. I ain't doing that. I'm going to say what I need to say. Take it or leave it. Like it or leave it. Love it or leave it. Leave it. Like it or lump it. Like it or lump it. I was going to, I'm just going to say like it or lump it. That was my statement I made my whole life. Like it or lump it. Yeah. You got, you got to, you got to deal with it. But it's the <laughs> truth. Now prove me wrong. I still love y'all, but prove me wrong. Listen, one last thing I want to talk talk to you about mm -hmm. tell me about your mama oh my mama uh my mom is, is an amazing woman you know she had a stroke recently and she's not doing great right now 
Um, I would love to be able to see her very soon. Mm -hmm. Um, but she is a remarkable woman that had to endure a whole lot to bring me into this world. And, uh, she's been, uh, you know, a huge, huge, um, staple in my life. You know, you're a miracle. Oh, I'm absolutely a miracle, you know, and, um, she wrote me once at a minimum per day when I was in prison at a minimum, sometimes three and four times a day. And so she, her letters would come to me and I would read them and they were so beautiful that I would share them and said, Hey, here's some letters for all of these guys. None of their moms had mom. They didn't have moms or didn't speak to their moms anymore. Or hadn't spoken to them. And so my mom's letters became, you know, like the daily thing. When I got mail, everybody got mail. Oh. And so, yeah, she's a remarkable woman. And um, I hope what a able, voice I w hope to be able to one day uh, publish those. My mom was a singer. You know, she sang on the Grand Ole Opry as a beautiful voice. Yeah, she's an amazing, amazing singer, you know, so beautiful. Yeah. She yeah. taught me how to sing and yeah, you didn't know I sang. Right? And you didn't know I sang. Did you uh, know I sang? Well, no, when we, we, were, we were talking, you were like, oh, I was singing. I was like, well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to do a duet or something. <laughs> you know what? Don't play with me. Because, you know, we, we, let's see, we got Ronnie Mann, we got you, we got Roy, we got myself. There's so many. There's, an, oh, oh uh, BP, Earthwatch. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people yes, yeah. who are really talented that are in these YouTube streets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but your mama can sing. Yeah, you know what? My daughter and I, you know, I danced too. You know, I toured with Lana Ritchie for a while. I was a choreographer for the break dancers in the 84 Olympics closing ceremonies. And so I was a you know street dancer, and you didn't know that, did you? My sister was in the '84 Olympics in Los Angeles '84 Olympics. Yeah, in the Coliseum. I was yeah, the Coliseum. Was she a dancer in it? In well, that? she or, was a page, and she did some of the. You you know what, my sister? You probably know my sister. She lives in the. She lives in. She lives in West London now. She lives in. I forgot what part of London, but my sister was in that. She was that big, but what? Yeah, she was there. Yeah. So, yeah, I did that. And so my daughter and I, my daughter's a DJ. She's 25. She's a DJ and she does shuffling and all that on TikTok. And so on Thanksgiving, I was sharing Thanksgiving with my family to all together for the very first time, my ex-wife and all my kids and, and my grandkids and everything for more than a decade. And that didn't go, you know, unnoticed on me. I was just like, Father, this is just amazing to be here. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and to have my ex invite me was even more amazing. Mm -hmm. and very, very sweet. We had a good time. We played cards against humanity. We had a blast. But my daughter said, she just set her phone down and she said, Dad, we're going to do a TikTok. I'm going to challenge you, this old man, to dance off. And so she um, she did. Maybe I can bring it up. I, I, maybe yeah, I can bring it up. Send it to me and I'll click it. Send it to me and I'll click it and then we'll hang out before we, before we, uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's fun. But yeah, just so, oh, hold on. Oh, here, just, can you share it and put it on your side and then I will allow you to, and I'll share it on this side. Here, let me, let me see if I can get it on this uh Bring Open it up, up a new tab. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't ready to, to show any of this, but. Oh, no, you don't want to. You don't want to because I, I, you know, I could do the Roger. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Y'all ain't ready for that. You guys ain't ready. <laughs> y'all think you ready, but you ain't ready, baby. You ain't so. ready. I could do I could dance. I could do all this. stuff. So listen, you guys, as as he pulls that up, I want you guys to go down into the into the description for those of you who are not subscribed or for those of you who are subscribed but haven't hung out in a minute over there go down there click all of his information is there there are ways to give that are there everything as it relates to my guests are down below in the description yeah Anything. and please and please support uh uh felicia definitely donate if you can because this is not easy to do and it's hard and uh, let me see chrome tab here we go got it okay can you see this yet? Yes, I can. Hold on. Here we go. All right, y'all. We're gonna. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give the whole screen to it. There. All right. Here we there go. You go. Okay. Go. So that was us. <laughs> <laughs> How cute was that? Oh, she got some moves and so do you. Oh, she does. I, I wasn't, you know, it was so funny because everybody that knows me knows me and has known me like uh, uh, when I was managing Cuba, his cousin, who was a stand-in, Keith, he, he was like, Gooding. yeah. Oh, so, and that was in the movie, um, 
Oh, goodness. Okay, go. I, I forgot the name of the movie that I looked up. There was a movie. Ah, okay, go. Uh, a movie that we were both involved in, A Murder of Crows. That's it. Yeah. Murder of Crows. You know the crazy thing, I want to tell you something that I learned today. What? We're out of here, my sister's place. It is the largest murder of crows in the United States, and it flies every single day. It migrates from one place, this whole murder of crows, and I'm not kidding you, it's probably a million and a half crows. Is it black in the whole sky? Oh, it's it's this long, it's like a freeway that goes over top and it's all day long. Those like they they the, it takes them the whole day to migrate in the morning to where they're going. Whoa. And then they migrate. It's crazy. It's like a weird. video. Yeah, I was going to there's just so many of them. It's like you you've got to be able to see it. Uh, I have to have the right camera, but when you look and you're watching them go over and you look look in the horizon so far away, you're looking mm -hmm. 20 miles away, you can see this stripe of them. Mm. For 20 miles, you're like, this is crazy. The largest murder crow. So yeah, Murder Crows was a movie that I was the executive producer of. And there's a murder mystery that I did with Cuba. But I managed him and I made movies. My last movie was Men of Honor with uh, Robert De Niro. Wow, I love it. Don't y'all love who y'all see and who y'all know? See, see? Well, listen, I want to thank you so very much, kind sir, for spending the last almost, what, hour and a half with me? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Will you please come back very soon? Anytime you want. Okay, good. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> no, of course, no, no. You're, you know, and and when I start doing some live shows, I'll bring you over to the to the other channel as well. There's oh, gonna be yeah. once I get some of the, you know, what I'm gonna be doing next and how I get it established and um and may, I I have a bunch of changes that I that, that I need to make on the channel and things. I just got to get myself settled here. And and I uh, think you're gonna do well. I think I think your direction that you're going uh, into is a very selfless direction. Very selfless. Uh, because it's really for the people. Everything that you described has nothing to do with you. Everything I mean, in, in our you know time that we've spoken and, and even now, what you've described to me sounds like you are really, truly, and honestly um, wanting to invoke change. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you're going to see the people who can promulgate what it is that you have received as your download, as it were. Yeah. And it's hard. It's going to be, I, I can tell you right now, that's not a fluff and puff. It's going to be hard. It's going to be it's hard, be hard. Be addressing really difficult things in all of us. Cause we've got to, we have, if we don't confront ourselves right now, mm -hmm. then we're going to hold it against ourselves at the time that we really cannot afford to hold anything against ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really my concern. And I feel it coming. I feel it really, really hard. And uh, it just concerns me. And so the message has to change. Well, I'm glad you were here. Thank you so much, Derek. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And, you know, Felicia, you would just, you know, please give my best to your husband, your family, and everybody to, that they that they allow you to take the time to do this. <laughs> I'm like, Saul, be quiet up there. Hey, hush. You'll stop all the noise. Oh, child. My husband is like, oh, there she goes. You guys are quiet. Listen, I'm going to pull you down as I say goodbye to everybody. But is there anything that you'd okay. like to say to them before you say goodbye? Before I just we like say to goodbye? Tell everybody that I love them. And I really, really sincerely um, thank anybody for that supported me and continue to pray because it's always needed. And but things are going wonderful. I feel and I know your prayers and keep them coming. OK. Yeah. All right. All right. You guys heard it. I'm so very happy that we all had this time spending it with him, talking, getting to know him, getting to hear, you know, you can hear some answers for yourself. You don't have to uh, go by a lot of this other stuff that's out there in, in the world right now. Listen to the person and, and hear people's hearts. You guys have the spirit of discernment. You all know how to discern. You, you all are not novice with any of this, right? Um, and so you have to learn to, to, to meet people where they are love people where they are, understand that not all the information you thought you had was it, and just keep it pushing. Keep it pushing, shorty. That's all you got to do. All right? Listen, you guys, you know what we always say, <clears throat> excuse me, on any Felicia Lockhart publications, and that is that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the most high. You guys take care of yourselves first. And then after you do that, I want you to reach around and take care of somebody else. Because as you know, you ain't going to be able to do nothing for them if you're not all right. <laughs> and then after that, I want you guys, until we see one another again, please, please continue to be blessed. You guys take care.
To receive instant notification each time I upload, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. Helping